Hey folks, Daniel here, and as you know, over the last few years, I've done a lot of Cadillac content, and occasionally people reach out and they say, Daniel, I'm super thankful for the information you provided in your videos. How can I help? Well, YouTube has offered now a way for you to help. You can give super thanks by hitting that button right down there by the like button, and it'll give you an opportunity to directly contribute to the channel. Now, I'm also giving something away today. Uh, it's not the mod we're talking about, unfortunately, but I am giving away a V-Sport carbon fiber license plate frame. It was donated from another member, and I'm gonna tell you at the end of the video how you can win one of these, and I'll give away another one in another video later on. But be sure to keep watching because you'll want one of these plate frames. You can't buy them anymore. All right, on to the mods. So today we're talking about a very special modification brought to you by a company called Alpha Mods. And this digital rear view mirror with the camera view, it wasn't available on a lot of Cadillacs. It's now available, they say, on the CT5V Blackwing as an option and such. But uh, if you didn't option it or your older Cadillac never had the option for it, you can now add it. I think it's really cool. Now, they've been through a couple generations of this mirror. There was the first generation, slightly lower resolution, had this ugly plastic frame around it. One of the reasons I didn't like the mirror. And then they came out with the second generation. And the second generation is available, say, on the CT4 and the CT5s. And this is the frameless design, which is a really sexy look, I think. I've always loved my regular frameless mirror in my CTS V-Sport. So how does this work? Well, basically it's a replacement mirror and it has a switch that changes it from reflective glass to a TFT LCD flat screen. And it's gonna show you what the rear camera is looking at. Not the one that you use for your rear view and backing up. It's another camera that is in the Sirius XM fin on the back of your car. So this kit is gonna replace that fin. It's gonna give you some special cables from Alpha Mods and you're just gonna run that camera feed all the way to the front to the new mirror that comes in the kit. And that's it. Since this is the second generation of the mirror, you're gonna get some extra features. You're gonna get a higher definition of video. You're gonna get uh, five levels of brightness and that beautiful frameless design. It's really cool to have this because you're gonna see more than you normally see with a regular review mirror. And the view isn't gonna be obstructed by say the headrests in the back or people sitting back there, or like me, dark tinted windows. So it's a very clear view. Now be sure to go to the Alpha Mods website. It's mods4alpha.com. Check out the link there in the description. And you can see some of the cool things that Alpha Mods provides that you probably won't find anywhere else, including folding side view mirrors for your CTS and ATS. That's a really cool mod. I'm hoping I can do a review on that in the future. So today we're installing this mirror system in a 2016 CTS V-Sport. It belongs to Adrian. You can find him Chillaxin on Instagram. His car is already a really great build with a lot of cool upgrades and this is really gonna add to it. With the 2016, this mirror wasn't even available. They didn't offer it on the CTSs until 2017 and then it was just the first generation one. So he's really getting a top of the line mirror in his 2016 CTS. All right, so what do you say we get started? Install this video mirror system. All right, for this installation, you'll need the following tools. You'll need a T20 Torx bit, a seven millimeter socket, an eight millimeter socket, and a 10 millimeter socket. Of course, you'll want something to drive it with, so a ratchet, or I really love having my Ryobi here. It's really cheap, it gets the job done, especially when my DeWalt is a bit big for the space. I found it handy to have a magnetic retrieval tool. There are some screws that kind of fall into a place that are hard to get. And you'll definitely want a trim removal tool. You can get a full set of these on Amazon. In fact, the Ryobi and the trim removal tool, you can get uh, those through my Amazon associate links down in the description. It'll help support the channel when you buy after clicking that link. Lastly, there is some dark area under the headliner. You wanna have some sort of light to illuminate the space. All right, let's get started. Here are the basics in 30 seconds. We'll remove our original mirror, remove the grab handles from the front passenger, the rear passenger, and the rear driver's side. We'll remove the A pillar, B pillar, and C pillar from the passenger side as well as the driver's side C pillar. Then we'll drop the headliner, swap out the old antenna for the new one with the camera, run our new wires all the way up to the front, hang the new mirror. If it all works, we'll put it back together. Now that's just the basics, stick around for the details. All right, to get started, let's remove this overlay that Adrian had on his mirror. He won't need that anymore. However, he might still need that air freshener. <laughs> Just kidding, Adrian. 
All right, first start by removing the lower plastic cover here. It helps to sort of squeeze it on the sides as you pull it down along the windshield. And then the top part is pretty easy to remove it as well. Just uh, work it around and it'll pop right off. Once you get the covers off, you're gonna see this connector here hiding just above the mirror. It just slides out of its resting spot and then you can disconnect the connector by pressing on the tab on the back side. It's so easy, I can do it one-handed. Then you can take that connector and the little mounting piece, you can remove that from the connector and use it again later. Underneath, you'll see the T20 Torx screw. You'll just wanna remove that. Once the screw's out, just lift the mirror towards the roof and it comes right out. Now grab your new mirror. Notice it has an extra plug on it. I'm going to hook it right back on the spot the other one was on, and then we'll install that T20 Torx screw. Reconnect the power, same connector that was there before, and try to position it wherever you can. You can reuse that one mount if you have it. And what's left is this plug, which we'll plug in later after we've added the new wire from the antenna. Now let's remove the A pillar. Get underneath the weather seal here and use your trim tool to get started and just pop it off. It's just on there with some clips. It's no big deal. It's not really likely to break, but don't pull it away right away. You need to disconnect the tweeter first. Look up in here, see this little tab? Hit that with your fingertip and that will disconnect from the tweeter. And now there's one more item, this hook here. So just unhook it from the A pillar. And now the A pillar is free to come out. It's kind of wedged down by the dash and windshield. Next, we're gonna remove three of the grab handles. Adrian's car has been apart before up here, so just pry here on these little plastic covers. I think his are installed upside down, actually. They usually sort of just hinge down. But once you're there, remove the two eight millimeter bolts. This is where my DeWalt is super handy. Once those bolts are out, you should be able to just pull the handle straight out of the roof. It's got some barbed bits that go into the roof there. And that's it. Just repeat that now for the passenger rear handle as well as the driver rear grab handle. Next, we'll get part of the B pillar out of the way. You only really need to get this top section out of the way. You'll see I pop off the lower section. It kind of came off anyway. Not totally necessary, but if you need to, you can get it out of the way to get the upper section away from the roof liner. That's all you need to do. It's stuck there with the seat belt anyway, so don't need to mess with it further. In the back at the C pillar, we're gonna pop this airbag badge off, and there's a seven millimeter screw under there. We'll take that out. It tended to get stuck there, and this is where my magnetic tool was very handy. Once you got that out, it just needs to pop out from the metal clips that are holding it in. Just find a good place to grab it and start pulling. It is wedged over by the speaker deck and the rear glass, so when you pop it out, you're gonna raise it up slightly and pull it slightly towards you. You'll see that it has some little L-shaped tabs that go into slots. Also be aware there is this down here with the plastic trim. It wasn't like that on the passenger side with Adrian's car, but your car probably has it on both sides. Now that you got all the necessary pillar covers off, we can start lowering the headliner. The headliner's just held in by clips in various locations. Just reach up in there, feel where they're at, but try not to pull on the headliner where there aren't any clips. You could possibly crease it. I found it helpful to fold down the rear seats. You don't need to drop the entire headliner. You mostly will access it here from the rear passenger side so you can get to the bolt that holds the antenna in place as well as the connectors for the antenna. Not shown is me unclipping the wires from the roof, but once you do that, you'll disconnect this yellow one, the XM antenna plug, and then this purple one, the power plug. They've both just got little tabs to squeeze and it releases the connector. Then we'll use our 10 millimeter socket to remove the bolt holding the Sirius XM antenna to the roof. It comes out with this little metal piece. Now Adrian's car has been wrapped and apparently they stuck it back on with some 3M double sided tape. This was pretty confusing as we couldn't figure out why it wasn't coming off. But we used some fishing line eventually uh, broke through the tape and got it separated. Your antenna should just come right on out. You can see it only has two plugs, but the new one has three. 
You'll want to clean off the roof where the antenna mounts, use some isopropyl alcohol, and then run the wires of the new antenna down through the hole. Plug in the power connector and then re-clip it to the roof like I didn't show you earlier before. Plug in the XM antenna plug and connect that to the roof as well. There's one more clip a little closer to the door. We'll clip that one in. Now you can install that little 10 millimeter bolt as well as the metal mounting piece. You wanna make sure it's nice and tight as the seal on the bottom of the antenna should seal tightly against the roof. Obviously don't crank it so hard that you compress the roof. Now here's our new connector on this antenna. It connects to the cable with the blue ends that came with the kit. Plug in the female end to that. And then I just used the twist ties that came with the kit's wires. Uh, you can use some zip ties and I just tied them up to the other wires just to keep them all sort of together. Now route it towards the front of the car. You don't have to do anything special right now. Let's just test it out. Plug the other end of the cable into the mirror and then start the car. The mirror doesn't work unless you start the car. If at first all you see is a reflection, all you need to do is flip the tab and you'll get that live view mirror. Look at that, it is awesome. Once you know it works, go ahead and lay in the wires in a nice organized fashion. In my case, I'm using some gaffer tape. It's kind of like duct tape, it just doesn't leave a residue. And I tape down the wires on the top of the roof liner so they don't wiggle around or rattle or anything. Then just put the headliner back in place. Make sure all the clips line up and just tap them back into their position. You'll have to do this a few times all around to make sure it's fully secure. By the way, Adrian's car used to be tan on the roof area and he had it recovered in this material as well as the pillars. Looks real good. He hasn't found the black weather stripping yet though. All right, time to put those pillar covers back in. Remember we got these three L-shaped tabs. They go down here by the speaker deck. There's also the two slots for the clips to go into by the glass. So I'll just position it down and then slide it into place and then get those clips lined up and I can just tap them in. And then down here, you could connect this before you slide it into place, but I decided to do it after and it worked out okay. Now we'll put that seven millimeter screw back into place. I'm using the magnetic tool, otherwise it was pretty difficult. My DeWalt tightens it up and then put the little airbag badge back on. We'll repeat the process with the passenger side seat pillar cover. Now I'll move forward on the car. I'm gonna install all these grab handles. Just push those barbed sections of the handles back into the roof while you get your eight millimeter bolts. Tighten those up real nice and snug because you do want to hang on to these things. And then put the little covers back on. I found that it was better to hinge them from the bottom and then they snap at the top. You'll see what I mean, but they do go in either way. And then of course, repeat for the other handles. Next, we're gonna tuck in all the rest of the video wire. Since the forward section of the headliner hasn't been pulled down, it's a little tight here. You can use your trim tool to tuck the wire, but there should be plenty of room. I just bound up the rest of the wire and stuffed it in there. It's just fine there. Then just try to make it nice and tidy all around the mirror electronics here. Uh, you'll wanna be able to fit those covers on. That's really the only important thing you need to do here. I probably didn't get that part quite into place as I should have, but I couldn't quite figure out how I had it to begin with. Either way, this works fine. We'll just snap the covers back into place now. I'll start with the top one. It should be tight against the headliner at the top and then smooth up against the glass. Then the bottom one snaps up into the top section. All right, that's all done there. Now there's one thing I didn't do and that is the A pillar. There's no specific order. I'm putting these back. I could have done this earlier, but let's go ahead and put that back together. Remember this black clip? It clips onto this little white section of the A pillar. It's a tight fit though. Tuck the lower part of the A pillar down by the dash in the windshield and then hook this plastic clip on there. 
You'll have to squeeze your fingers down here to plug in the tweeter again. Thankfully, it goes in with very little resistance. Snap the A-pillar back in, give it a few taps, and then make sure the weather seal is seated properly around it. And that should complete the installation. All right, folks, that's it for the GM Live View Mirror. Pretty straightforward install, I would say. I haven't actually dropped the headliner before, so it was kind of fun and interesting, if you like that sort of thing. Now, driving the car, I did find what, you know, why people talk about it's a little uh, disorienting to be focused way down the road, and then you gotta focus inside at the screen, because with a glass mirror, you're actually focusing on whatever it is in the reflection and how far away it is, which is usually about as far as you're looking down the road forward. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but you can always switch back to the glass. And when you need a nice detailed view, switch it over to digital, maybe hit the zoom button. Adrian said he's really excited because at night, he can't see a darn thing out the back of his glass because he's got limo tint. So using the camera function, he's gonna see way better. So I'd like to thank Alpha Mods for putting together this mod system for us and makes it really easy to upgrade our cars. You can find them at modsforalpha.com. And uh, when you buy something there, be sure to let them know that I sent you. You can do that by using my promo code JETFUEL and you'll get free shipping and it lets them know that this video helped you find them. Now, like I said, we're doing a giveaway and that is the Carbon Fiber V-Sport license plate frame for all my uh, devoted V-Sport viewers. These were donated from somebody that used to have a V-Sport and wanted somebody who currently has a V-Sport to love them as much as he did. So he sent them my way so I could do a giveaway in this video and a future one. Remember, you can't get these anymore. They did come in a little rough, but I polished them out, put a ceramic coating on them. So they're not perfect perfect, but they do look pretty good as you can see in the video. Now, if you want a chance to be a random winner, all you gotta do is hit that like button there, be a subscriber, of course, and then in the comment section down below, I want you to type, thanks Alpha Mods. That's it, thanks Alpha Mods. If you're the winner, I'll reply to your comment and uh, we'll get in touch. My email is jetfuelonlychannel at gmail.com and uh, we'll get your address and send it right out to you. Now, there's one more plate to be given away and it will be in another Cadillac video in the future sometime. So if you wanna know when that video comes out, you might wanna hit the bell so you can be notified of future videos. All right guys, thanks so much for watching the Jeff Fiole channel. We'll see you next time.